Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet Channel. Today we're going to do a nice cobbler in the Dutch oven, so y'all stay tuned. <music> So as far as I know, this is a Backwoods Gourmet original recipe. I, I came up with this recipe about 20 years ago and have been making this uh, for, for that long. Uh, basically as a way to make the, you know, wild, wild blackberries a little better, uh, I think, without putting a ton of sugar in them. And this, today's recipe is going to be relatively low sugar compared to what you're going to see in a lot of other type of recipes like this. The first thing we're going to do is make our pie crust, and pie crust is pretty easy if you have one of these food processors. This is a pretty raggy old one, but you know, I got it at a yard sale years ago, and you know, it works. It's getting a little beat up and cracked up, and so on. Um, first, we're going to just go in here with uh, two full cups of all-purpose flour. You, uh, this is one of those instances where you don't want to use self-rising flour. We don't want our pie crust to rise. And then about a teaspoon of salt. Put the lid on here and just give that a quick spin. All right, so here comes the magic to this. We take a full stick of butter, cut it into pats, and frozen it. All right, this frozen salad. Been in the freezer a couple of hours. All right, so that's going to resist wanting to melt when we chop it into the flour, and this is going to be kind of a violent thing in this in this machine so y'all stand by it's going to be kind of loud and jerky So now that butter is cut into the flour and it's little still whole little bits that didn't melt. Okay. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it on low. We have ice water. We'll put it on low here. Slowly add ice water until it starts to form a dough. Okay, so we just took the dough out, we put it on a piece of aluminum foil, separated it into two separate parts, equal parts, gonna cover it up, put it in the fridge. Alright, so we got uh, four nice firm uh, peaches, and we're just gonna go ahead and peel them. Peel yours however you like. I like a little curved pear knife for mine. And I just start at the top and go all the way around until they're all done. transfer our all our sliced peaches into the bowl just got this pan here just to catch you know the mess I'm not getting the countertop all messy all right into a large bowl and I want to test these see how sweet they are they're real sweet don't add a lot of sugar they're kind of tangy like these are give that about half a cup light brown sugar, give it a good sprinkle of nutmeg, it's about
about a tablespoon. I'm going to get about a tablespoon of cinnamon. One final item that I forgot to bring out. So I always like to take my fruits that are got a little tang to them, like these peaches do, and just give them a little salt. You know, salt's great on almost any kind of fruit. It's going to help bring out the sweetness of it. These are going to kind of cure in this sugar and the spices, and it's going to start bringing the, some of the moisture out of them, and you'll have a nice liquid in the bottom of the bowl after these set in the fridge for a little while. After that happens, and they're ready to go into our cobbler, we'll put a little cornstarch in there, which will help to thicken it um, and right before we put it into our cobbler. That just needs to hang out in the fridge about maybe 30 minutes. Oh, this one. Get in there. Okay, guys, time to make the dough for our cobbler. We're just going to flour liberally our surface here. Get a nice uh, bed of flour going there. Here's our pie dough. Just going to kind of knead it maybe two or three times just to make sure that it's all pulled together. This will also uh, cause a, you to get a few layers in there, which are always good. Yeah. While we're up our rolling pin, I'm going after this guy. Now I just want to stretch, so to work with him. got a 10 inch dust oven over here so remember we want to want this to be big enough to, to deal with it so remember I told you there was going to be some juice that came off of these guys and you can see it down in the bottom it's like a, almost a syrup so and these peaches are going to put out a lot of juice when they cook so we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch over the top of them now that they've had a time to get for all this liquid going and that'll give uh, you know some place for the cornstarch to dissolve into and that's going to make our nice standing you know when you pull the piece out it's not going to run all over the plate so there's quite a bit I'm going to give that just a little bit more just want to do it kind of adjust it with the amount of liquid that comes off your peaches but that'll help all that thicken up once it's cooked and it, you know it's gonna be fine believe me all right so now we got our our uh, pie crust lined dutch oven we're gonna take half of these just half all right half in the bottom spread them all around all right then we got our blackberries let's get these ready just going to take blackberries and just spread them kind of around the edges wherever you think you want um, each serving to have a blackberry so wherever you think your servings are okay so our second layer on and then the rest of our blackberries just evenly spread over kind of nestle them in ready now we'll put on the lattice stop all right so we got our uh, our square piece of pie crust over here and you know, it's kind of awkward me trying to keep this all in the, in the camera so you guys can see it. I don't have a cameraman here to, to help me, you know, to do this kind of thing. This is pretty much me by myself um, out here doing this for you guys every day. And uh, so that brings me to uh, a little piece of news. You know, we just opened up a new uh, Patreon site where you can actually go and uh, contribute to the Backwoods Gourmet to help... Uh, help us you know bear some of the cost of making all these dishes for you and uh, just the cost of production 
Uh, my only help here is Mrs. Backwoods. This is a huge help. Uh, takes care of the dishes in the house, and believe me, there tends to be a lot. So I'm going to start with one lattice in the middle. First, I'm going to run them all one direction. Probably go. We'll do our longest ones first. All right, I'll cut one in half. Over here. Over here. Now we want to weave this, so what we're going to do is we're going to take every other one and fold it back on itself, just like that. Try to keep your flower side your flower side. And you can put one right down the middle. Right. Pull these right back over. And you're starting your weave. Now we'll pull the other ones back. There. There. And right there. Got it. Put this one down. Don't worry about the tag ends yet. We'll take care of those. And I can bring that guy back. Turn them around and do the same thing on the other side. Pull that one middle button back. Might hit the end there a little bit, so we'll pull the end one back a little. Tuck them under. Your middle one down. These two guys back. Not going to need a full stick there. Just like we do when we do a bacon weave set, this is loose, not tight like a bacon weave. All right, now all we're gonna do is just go around here, kind of take our tool and just tuck those in, tuck them, tuck those ends down into the the actual cobbler so they're not sticking up there where they're gonna get all burned. So just gonna tuck them in, make sure they're down inside. I said we're not gonna worry about this uh, going around the edges here. Got a little big flap there. I might pull that down a little bit. Otherwise, you can either cut these or tuck them. I'm going to tuck them because this is great pie crust. I remember there's pie crust in the dough, so. Oh, got that one. Come on, up. There he goes on top. There you go. All right. All right. Now, one more step and we're ready to put them on a Dutch oven. Or on a, on a fire. We already got, we're going to get some uh, charcoals going back here behind us while we do the finishing touches. So the last step before we cook this guy, we just got one egg white that we've uh, beaten until it's a little foamy. I'm gonna go ahead and paint all this lattice work and any of the exposed crust up on the top with the, with the egg white. And it'll give it beautiful, beautiful brown. You don't have to do this if you're out camping or whatever. Uh, it just helps. And you can actually do this, you know, out at the campsite. I have done it many times with blackberries. Um, just, you know, a lot of times you might want to skip uh, making the homemade dough or make it ahead of time. But you can also just, you know, stop at the store and get those little, uh, I know everybody's going to say, what? Those little Pillsbury ones in, you know, the refrigerated dough section. Or, uh, they're, they're not. They're not bad. They're easy to, to operate with. And, uh, you know, if you don't have time to do it, it's better to use a store bought pie crust than not do it at all. So, after that, we just gonna have a little bit of white sugar. I'm gonna sprinkle that, maybe a couple tablespoons, right over top of that egg. Our lid. Fire's getting ready. Time to bake.
so we're set up for like a 350, 375 cooking. And you notice even our bottom coals, we got to pull way out to the outside edge. Uh, don't want a chance of burning that up in there. Like I said, it's very hard to check on it. So, and it's going to go for about an hour. minutes that's perfect I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and take it off the fire all right there it is it smells wonderful you can really smell the uh, blackberries there you see it's all still bubbling juicy um, so all we gotta do now is if we can try to let it cool a little bit folks time for the plate let me go ahead in here and uh, try to get us a piece out the first one is the hardest one you know to get it started after that it's generally a lot easier Just using the spatula to kind of cut through the crust it's nice and crunchy so uh, let me see if I can get down in there yeah right up underneath it watching it back with gourmet if you like what we're doing hit the subscribe button right here hey if you want to see our last video check it out right up there and for a whole playlist of cast iron and dutch oven cooking see it right up here we'll see you next time